Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again, back with another Entitled Neighbor story. In this video, a city built an illegal bike path through my private property without permission. Let's dive right into the video. And the first one starts like this. So I was with my crappy husband for 10 years, we had a successful band together and toured all over for years. He asked an artist who had opened up for another certain famous artist in our genre to give us a good word and help us open for him on his next tour. My husband wanted that opportunity so bad as he thought the artist was badass AF and the friend ended up opening for the badass AF artist so we did not get the tour. He never knew that we tried though and didn't know who we were as our name never got past the friend my husband asked to help us. We divorced a few years later and I started dating again. My husband honestly was a piece of crap, one of if not the worst people I've ever met in my life as far as how he takes advantage of people and screws other people over. One tiny example is that he pawned my wedding dress and the five heirloom rings from my grandmothers and great grandmothers that were passed down to me. He has done even worse than that but I won't get into it right now for the sake of getting to the point. Anyway though, the badass AF musician came into my town and had been on Bumble and matched with me. He did not know that I was part of the band from before. So anyway, he took me out for a weekend, wined and dined me every day, drove me to the festival he was performing at all weekend, bought me gifts, spent the whole weekend with me and asked me to go with him on a resort vacation. And yes, I made sure my craphead ex-husband found out about all of that. I told him how amazing he was when he performed, how nice he was, what a great weekend we had together and how he is even greater in person, blah blah blah. It was so satisfying. By the way, edit for those who are giving me crap about how I should have left him earlier and how I'm a bad person, read on. I was not gonna get into all this but it's fair enough to give me crap without having the back story, so yes, I'm sure he does have his own version of how it all went down but the facts are the facts in this scenario and I never did anything to harm him physically, financially, emotionally, reputation wise, even when he did the worst to me. Here's some context, I grew up Christian where in my circle it was normal and expected to get married young. I married him at 19 and he was 7 years older. I mentioned a Christian thing because I was taught that you trust your husband as the authority and that divorce was bad. Through the years he was extremely abusive emotionally, financially, verbally, physically and it grew and grew each year. I stayed because I thought it was the right thing to do. I mentioned the thing about the selling of the heirlooms and dress because I was keeping it light versus bringing up a bunch of dark examples. I was very much isolated from my family and any objective reasoning until the end where I was a shell of myself and couldn't go on anymore like that because I was severely depressed and unable to cope with life. After that I made the brave decision to reach out to my family for support as I got away from him and filed for divorce. He fought on it all the way just to be cruel. Our daughter died and he stole all the money from the GoFundMe that was raised in her name, tens of thousands of dollars, closed our joint bank account two days after she died, opened a new one in his name with a different bank and got the person who set up the GFM to link it to his new bank account. He sent a bank statement to me with my account saying, zero dollars as a final F you. The things he did to me over the years are too much to even say. He abused me and my daughter and I tried everything to keep our marriage together, counseling for myself when he wouldn't go, I read all the marriage books, I did everything I thought a good wife should do to support and love him and it did not make a difference. I could have done a lot to ruin his reputation but I've always been the bigger person so for Christ's sakes I'm gonna proudly have this one. And yeah, Ripe Stars, honestly, I don't understand why Reddit attacked this poor woman. There's no way she was the a-hole in this story or something. But anyway, let me know what you think about this story in the comments. The next one is the title story, which is titled City Built Illegal Bike Path Through My Private Property. The title story starts like this. I always feel so damn old when I have to kick people off my property. I imagine myself shaking a fist and yelling, Whippersnappers! With a bag that resembles the letter C. I know that is not the case, but I cannot help it. I just wish they didn't make me do it so damn often. I'm very fastidious about my property lines. The entire perimeter is either marked by fences, signs or both to let my neighbors and the city know exactly where my property ends. I don't have a ton of land, I just want to protect that land that I do have though because my father took pride in it. Hopefully I differentiate myself from the crotchety image that haunts my nightmares by letting kids play on my property or also letting some joggers cut through my property to get to the park on their route. 
I'm not unreasonable, I just keep it up to a certain standard. Pets, bikes and the city's incessant attempts to build projects on my land. These are the things I have no patience for. I might need to make it clear to a new neighbor every once in a while, but they always grow to respect my boundaries. The city on the other hand though, well, every detail of my property is filed with the city. They are intent on getting their hands on some of my property though. They have come to me incessantly about trying to purchase parts of my land for various projects. As a rule, I don't even really agree with the projects the city wants my land for. Lately, they came to me to buy a portion of my land for a large bike path project. This is a project I can actually get behind, it sounds wonderful, however, they were initially asking for far too much land for far too little cash. I know from casual conversation that this had affected most of the neighbors on my street too. The city came back again and again with adjusted offers and admittedly, I got caught up in my indignation of their initial offer, paired with their persistence. Even though the bike path is something I could support, I still said no to the reasonable offers. Others did not let the initial enthusiasm that the city showed stop them. Eventually, although I didn't know this at the time, a small strip of my land was the last thing between them and construction. And they were not about to let such a small piece of land stand between them and their final vision. I went on vacation for a week without ever thinking of the city and their offers. They had finally stopped their incessant visits a couple of weeks back and I took it in stride and wondered what their next venture to ask for my land would be. Then I returned from vacation and had a rude awakening from my rest and relaxation. A section of my yard has been roped off. They are almost done with their work and the earth has already been broken and then shaped and then filled with asphalt. The only thing keeping it from being complete was that it hadn't been painted yet. Which is exactly what they were preparing with the little machine they were all gathered around. It kept them distracted while I stormed across my backyard so that when I shouted to get their attention, the foreman jumped about a foot in the air. I doubt that little jump helped or hurt me in the conversation that followed, but I was livid by the end of it and at least it gave me something to take as a win. Not much, but something. This is my property. You clearly ignored the signs I had posted. Signs posted by an individual have little to no actual value. I got permits and documentation the city gave me when they hired me. Well, any of the city's documentation about this location would match the signs because I have thoroughly filed every inch of this land in city hall. Obviously you were mistaken about this small section of land or I wouldn't have had the permits provided to me to do this work. I tried to keep things calm as I started to protest again. Look you imbecile, this is not your property but if it was you should thank me anyway. The wonders this can do to your property value is insane. From there I was fuming and kept my replies short as his got even progressively longer and more insulting. He never ended up deeming me worthy of receiving his supervisor's phone number, probably to keep from getting reported when he realized that was definitely gonna happen. However, he shouldn't be driving a van with the decal of his company's name if that's gonna be an issue. I documented my interaction with the construction foreman and contacted his company to speak to the person who accepted the contract from the city. I got my information about the city hiring them and then I reported the foreman. I also asked for the permits that they had been issued for this construction project. As far as I know, this part of the call just fell straight out of the owner's empty head as soon as we were off the phone because nothing came of it. When the company started running me in circles, I went to the city planning staff and tried to find the group responsible for the bike path project on my property and thus the permits that the construction company had supposedly received. The city decided they liked what the company had done and started to lead me in circles as well. I was getting nowhere from nearly a month of jumping from one phone call to the next and the section of property that they had built over was visible from my kitchen, so I would sit fuming while I ate breakfast and dinner as people went biking over my trail. I was far from angry at any of them, in fact I did enjoy having the trail there, I was just angry that I'd been walked over by my city. I had allowed myself to become the crotchety old man shooing everyone away from my yard and still had my father's property wrongfully encroached upon. I got tired of it, they were ignoring me because they obviously thought I was not a threat, especially with the path built. I would not block it because I truly did like the people biking by, but I wouldn't sit on my hands and do nothing either. I knew the one thing that would get the city to listen to me was a lawyer. I hired one from a firm I had to do a settlement with once before, they specialized in property rights. That got them worried, the city offered me a paltry few thousands in hopes that I wouldn't pursue any further legal action. Good thing I did not take their BS at face value before, or I would assume this was the first time they realized their mistake. Needless to say, I turned down the initial settlement. 
So I filed a lawsuit against the city and the construction company for trespassing, property damage and emotional distress. And I sent the information about the lawsuit to a few contacts I had in the local news station from work. Before court was actually in session, the story was plastered all over the news. It was well covered. I just sent them the raw facts and they came up with the angle. City touts its ability to strong-arm citizens into parting with their possessions through sheer belligerence and negligence. Anyone beneath this administration will have to watch their family heirlooms to make sure the city doesn't crush them for use as gravel. They did not cave immediately, it was not long either though, they were willing and able to drop the legal fees I'm sure, but the bad publicity with an election not far off? Well, not a chance. This time they actually treated me fairly with their settlement, it took less attempts than their offers for buying my property had at least. I accepted this one and walked away from the trial more than compensated to be honest, I was actually rich now. Especially since I had already decided to keep the path and now the power was mine. So I decided to do something that revealed just how much the city gets in its own way. I ceded a portion of land to the city under a few special conditions. So it technically was not the city's property but I allowed it to be used as public land under conditions of care. They do proper maintenance and I will never need the land for anything more than watching people enjoy it. I think I'll use some of the excess money to start a committee that cares for more of it than just a few feet within my immediate reach though. And here ripe stars if you would have been in OP situation would you also just let the city have it in exchange for money so to say? Or would you have fought more against them? Let me know in the comments what you would have done and while you're at it please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're getting closer and closer to 130,000 subscribers. And the next one is a malicious compliance story. So I work for a Spanish company, it's been like 7 or 8 years and we know each other pretty well. I've known and worked with the CTO for like 10 years now, he is a cool guy that wants stuff done, even before 2020 the work from home policy was extremely relaxed, you do you and have things done by the time we need it so we are okay, so when the pandemic came the transition was as easy as it could get. In fact as a company and especially on the tech team we embraced the opportunity and started hiring people from outside the city for a cheaper salary than in the city but for the people a higher salary than the one they could get without moving into the city. And by the way I feel like my head exploded just there. I even moved out of the city during that time so since the CTO didn't want to be a sales guy the company hired a CEO in 2021 an Englishman that came highly recommended and was stationed in his rural house in the English countryside. Looked like a cool relaxed guy for a while, once the pandemic ended he started pushing rather heavily for a return to office RTO for everyone, he made polls, lengthy emails to everyone about how this fostered relationship and whatnot. He got really pushy even complaining to CTO about it, so every time he came to Spain people that lived around the city would go to the office just to be there so the CEO was happy. And then one time the CTO decided that he had enough about the whole RTO mandate and CEO complaining, so on a random a meeting of the tech team, CTO said, Okay, next Tuesday I want everyone on the office. If you live far away, book a train, drive, whatever you have to do, I will pay but be here. And so we did. That Tuesday, every single one of the tech team, including people that took a two or three hour trip to get there, was in the office and guess who was not there? Yeah, the CEO. So the CTO took a picture, emailed it to the CEO, saying something along the lines of, if you cannot lead by example, don't push my people to do things that don't work. And we went to have a relaxing lunch and beers type of day. Aftermath, RTO mandate never came to fruition, CEO was out of the company a year later and we closed the office since everyone works 100% of the time from home and to his dismay, CTO is now CTO and acting CEO and things are going smoothly. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. My father was the owner of a large farm outside of town, much beloved and a pillar of the community. Though not everyone felt that way, one man in particular was jealous of his success. X was a neighbor who also owned farmland though nowhere near the size or quality of my father's estate. The two often bickered about the land rights which I thought would cease at the time of my father's passing but instead X took the opportunity to put his evil plans finally into motion. When my father passed away it was sudden and unexpected. Though it was a small comfort to know that he died peacefully in his sleep it still shook our family terribly. 
A week following the funeral, I was handed my inheritance, my father's farm and lands. While I felt in no reasonable state to carry on where he left off, I also wanted to do him proud, keep the farm going. It was my second day of moving boxes that I met X. He made no condolences, if anything, he looked excited to have a new neighbor. Our interaction was brief, he made no offer to help and I did not ask. X often passed my driveway on his walk with his two large sheepdogs. I was unlucky enough to catch him outside on one of those mornings. While conversation was difficult over the incessant barking of his noisy hounds, I did catch the occasional word. Fans came up a lot, as did right, followed by charades when it became more clear that I only heard half the conversation. X was basically trying to insist that the fence between us should be moved and that my father owed him some land due to a border error. I nodded along politely, but non-committedly. Later, I decided to call for an appointment with a surveyor over to confirm his theory. The land surveyor was as confused by the idea as I was and assured me that all property borders were currently correct. So I guess X turned out to be a complete liar. Surprise, surprise. X must have noticed my visitor as he came poking around after, very curious to who they were. When I told him it was a surveyor, he was furious to hear that I didn't take his word for it, no doubt because he knew he was lying through his crooked teeth. The conversation hit a standstill after that and he left in quite a salt. I guess whatever goodwill we had between us was spent now, leaving only hostility from a distance. It was a while before I saw him again, and even on days he passed by I was in no rush to say hello. That was until I saw him strolling casually through my field on his usual dog walk. I guess I never asked or considered his route before, but I was really annoyed that X trot through my fields every day without so much as asking me first. While he simply could have mistaken it for a public footpath, I doubted his naivety. Wasting no time to correct his mistake, I set up some no trespassing and private land signs at the various entrances later that night. Maybe now he would at least come to me to ask permission first, I thought. I guess I should have known better though. The next morning I made a point of waiting by the window to see what he would do. Like clockwork, X came around the corner with his dogs. It was no surprise seeing as you can hear them barking long before you make sight of them. And well, he strolled straight past the first sign while he was looking at his phone. Putting away his phone, he did catch the second sign, stopping to read it. He scoffed loudly, turning towards my house with a bitter scowl. Luckily, I ducked out of sight in time to avoid his gaze. When I came back to look again, he was gone, but definitely carried on his usual path. Great, I thought, just another issue to deal with after my family vacation. As much as I did enjoy the annual tradition, it did come at a bad time this year, but I was still resolved to go anyway. It was only going to be for a week at least. How bad could things get in a week without me, right? Ha, <laughs> well, quite bad, it turns out. It was a short trip, but my worries at home only seemed to make it drag on longer. I was excited to be finally on the way back to the farm. Turning up the narrow public roads, I saw deep tread marks common to tractors, guessing X had been still busy with the farm work lately. As I arrived at my driveway, I was horrified to find the fence between our properties had been dug up and moved quite some distance, effectively cutting my own land in half. I followed the fence and found it covered as far as I could see. Probably my whole farm had now been downsized thanks to this neighbor. There were also some obvious signs of demolition work and large vehicles throughout, no doubt arranged by X in my absence. As I crossed the fence towards his door, I spotted his own makeshift signs of no trespassing, much similar to my own. In fact, they were. The cheeky bugger had stolen those as well and used them against me. After a few minutes of persistence, X finally opened the door, looking quite oblivious to my wrath. With a calm smugness, he pointed out that we had already discussed moving the fence, but I didn't consent. And that he thought it would be a good surprise for me, sort of like a moving in present. Well, it was a surprise for sure, but not a good one. I pointedly reminded him that the land was surveyed correctly, but he dismissed that as a hoax. When I offered to ask the police their thoughts on the matter, he smiled nervously before temporarily retreating, perhaps to get the phone for himself. Instead, when he opened the door again, the first thing I saw was the barrel of a shotgun pointed square at me, his calm face now red with rage. He directed me off his porch and followed me step by step until I was off his driveway. 
ex demanded that I let things be and that if I called the police on him, there would be trouble. Not that any of his words carried any subtlety at gunpoint. I nodded calmly, freezing up and hoping his trigger finger just did not slip. Suddenly, a noise from the house behind distracted his attention. It was only for a second, but it was enough. I lunged at him, forcing the barrel away from me as we wrestled for control of the firearm. With youth and build on my side, I overpowered the angry old farmer, knocking him to the floor with a jab from his own gun. He sat there stunned as I called the police, keeping the shotgun firmly griped in my free hand. By the way, is it griped or gripped? I'm not sure. Anyway, we did not have long to wait and after explaining the situation, we were both taken away for further questioning. I returned home several hours later and as far as I knew, the matter was dealt with. It was not until much later on that I heard X was sentenced to several years behind bars for a sum of offenses, none of which I felt particularly sorry about. He brought it all on himself and I was glad to be rid of him. By the way, of course I also pressed charges against him since I don't let anyone bully me like that without consequences. Well, in his absence it looked like his farm was sold to a housing developer. I was not overly thrilled with the idea of that but thought at least my own land would be safe. In the months that followed there was an uneasy peace throughout and for now I enjoyed that while I could. As far as I knew X would not be back for a while and if he was then his farm would not be waiting for him anymore. And yeah guys, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. Furthermore, you can find bonus content by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or by clicking the join button here on YouTube. For a small monthly fee, you will get access to dozens and dozens of exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.